when you have to run your snowpark application in your local machine you need to establish a connection using session api to the snowflake cloud data warehouse this video will talk and demonstrate how basic authentication works with the snowflake and how to use session api to create a connection object using user id and password this video will not cover rsa key based authentication or single sign on based authentication that is a part of other video in this playlist Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this Snowpark hands-on playlist. So let's start with our VS Code editor and we will use Python programming language for Snowpark coding. I am assuming you already have Snowflake Snowpark Python library installed and if not you can use this command to install the Snowflake Snowpark Python library. We will define a bare minimum connection parameters using user id and password we'll print the connection parameters we'll quickly create a session object and that's what we are going to learn and print the values from the session object to test whether it has established a connection with snowflake or not then we'll see how to close a session and we'll try to break the code with incorrect account id invalid password and locked user and try to understand how this exception looks so this is my connection parameter which is nothing but a dictionary and it has three keys account user and password i am just printing this connection parameters now i have to get a session object and for that i have to use session which is part of this import and then i have to use builder config by passing the connection parameter and a function called create after my session is created i am going to print couple of values based on the session just to validate whether my connection is established properly or not so i am now once it is done i can also have session dot close and okay so this simple the basic authentication now let's run this program and let's run it so i can see this is my account name this is my database name this is my default schema name though i have not given the database and schema however this user has a default database default schema and default role okay and that's why it has printed and here i am also printing the session object the type like dot snowpark dot session dot session object now what happens if you give incorrect account name so if you're not sure what is your account name let me show you how you can fetch account number from your snowflake web ui so you can go to your snow site web ui and run this sql statement select current account and it fetches your current account id now let's try to break the code and see what kind of exception is thrown by snowpark if i give incorrect username let's see what happens it ends with an error it says fail to connect database because the incorrect username and password was specified let me fix it and let's give incorrect password if the password is incorrect it will give incorrect username or password specified so whether your username is incorrect or a password is incorrect it will be difficult to identify what is incorrect so make sure that you type and revalidate your user id and password now if i give incorrect account name let's see what happens when i give incorrect account name it take longer than expected to bring the exception or error on your screen so it took more than 3 minutes to bring this error the error clearly says fail to connect to db verify the account name is correct and it gives you the account name followed by snowflake computing.com colon 443 we will try to see three different cases where the code breaks The snowflake gives different connector and each connector has a different way of establishing a connection to the account and in many cases you will get confused that your url should look like this let's try that if it works or not it says that error is 25001 could not connect to snowflake backend after zeroth attempt aborting so do not give https colon slash slash followed by account id followed by snowflake computing it just have to be account number and that's it what if you have a user who is logged user what exception you will get it let's try that out so my username is changed however i am keeping the same password for simplicity so it says database error 25001 and having a different code and says that user access disable contact your local administrator so 
Now I would like to show one more scenario how this statement works if you do not have a default database pass as well as warehouse what would happen. So I have created a user like this. So I have a demo user with you look into this user. This user has no default role, no default data warehouse, neither it has any default namespace which is represented with this fully qualified name. And if I try to connect to this user, let's see what happens. So if you look into the result, it printed the account name, it printed the role as a public role because this user has not got any role. So default role is a public role and it does not have database name, schema name and warehouse name. And the line number 30 ended with an exception saying that the database is not set for the current session. So these are the different kind of uh, challenges you may see if you do not specify appropriate parameter as a part of your connection param. Refer the description section to download the source code used in this tutorial as well as cheat sheet. If you have any specific questions, queries or doubt, please drop me a note in the description section or in my Instagram account. Thank you, happy learning and keep growing.